Howdy, welcome to video two for activity two from the business math and Excel module. In the previous video, we manually calculated revenue as a function of quantity. We also created a table and a graph to show revenue at various quantities. We can do this very quickly in Excel once we've set it up. Go ahead and open up the Excel file provided for you. Pause the video if you need to and get that file opened up. I've created this template for us to use. Right now, we're just going to focus on revenue. In a future video, we'll focus on costs. For revenue, the first thing I'm going to do is just enter the sales price we were given up here in the problem, the same one that we used when we calculated it manually, as a variable. So I'm going to manually type in our hard code 25 here. The variables that I populate here will be the only values that I hard code in this tab. Most of the other variables I will add in using a formula. So here, I just hard coded 25 into cell B13. Next, I wanna come down and create a table to calculate revenue. I'm going to start with zero, so I'm gonna hard code that. I said I was only gonna hard code 25, but I am gonna hard code zero. We'll put that in there. This is what we started with in the table that we created manually. Just like we did in the basic Excel video, I wanna create a list here of numbers. Then I wanna add the formula for revenue, which is just price times quantity. So I'll enter equals, then cell reference up to the price, multiplied by quantity, and hit enter. Then I wanna recreate that formula for different quantities. I can do this a number of different ways. I showed you a few ways we could create a list of numbers in the basic Excel video. If you're struggling with any Excel work we are doing here, stop this video and go back to the basic Excel video. In the case of this problem, I'm going to use a formula to add one to the quantity. If you remember back to the basic video, I could just type in one and then drag this list down to whatever number I wanted, but I don't wanna do that this time. I'm just gonna put a one up here and I'm going to add that to the zero. I'm going to absolute reference that one in cell A16 so that I lock that in, so I'm always adding by whatever number is in cell A16, and I'm going to copy that down. Let's go down to 15. The reason I did it that way with a formula instead of hard coding the list or dragging the list down is if I want to increase by five units with each row instead of by one, I can easily change that. So let's put it back to increasing by one. We just have a formula there to, to create that list. Now I need to get the revenue formula in cell B19 and actually all the way down my list. So we remember a few ways we can do that. We can copy and paste, or we can just double click in this corner of the cell and it will populate all the way down. Let's look at what I did wrong though, because we're getting some really weird numbers here. So this formula looks good, but that one doesn't. My variable for price is in B13, but because I copied and pasted that formula down, the cell Excel was pulling also moved down a row, and I didn't want it to do that. So remember, we can absolute reference that B13, and let me just double click it again and populate all the way down. Now we're seeing something more similar to what we did manually, where zero units times 25 is zero, two units times 25 is 50, and so on down to 15. And we did that pretty quickly without any manual calculations. Now that I have a table, I can simply create a chart. So if I want to create a chart or a graph, I just need to highlight the data I wanna use. I'm gonna select this data here. I wanna also include the headers in the data that I select so Excel knows how to label each axis of my graph. Then I'm going to go to insert in the menu bar and insert a recommended chart. So I went to insert in the menu bar, select recommended charts. Since we are looking at a trend over different units, over different quantity, the graph that makes the most sense is a line graph, like what we did manually in the previous video. So I'm gonna select the line graph here. You can select the one with the plot points if you want, either one works. Let's try that one. 
move it over just a little bit. And now we have a graph that quickly was created by Excel for us. And here I can easily see my data points where we have one unit at 25 of revenue, so one quantity for 25 revenue. We can go up here and we have seven units at 175 for revenue. Also, Excel is so flexible that if I change the number by which I'm increasing the units to five again, Excel is going to automatically change that chart for me. So it's now going up to quite a higher number of units and a higher revenue. I'll change it back to one and we get that chart that we saw originally. But I just want to show you how dynamic Excel is with our graph here. I can also play with the design and format of my graph in almost limitless ways. You can play around with the design after we finish this video. I just want to show you how to add axis labels. If you select the chart, you can either go up here to the design view, or you can even use this plus sign to add axis titles. And then I can change this label to whatever I want the axis title to be. If I want those titles to be dynamic, or I just don't want to type in the actual name of those titles, I can click in the box with the name, and in the formula bar, I can type in equals, in this case, units, and hit enter. And then if I change this, instead of saying units, I change it to quantity, that will update in my chart as well. I'll do the same thing with the revenue axis. So I'm going to go up here in the formula bar and equals and select revenue here and then hit enter. I can't type the formula in, in here manually, so I have to actually go up to the formula bar. I couldn't just type in equals units and select that over here. Uh, it just wouldn't know what I was doing. So make sure when you're trying to sell reference to labels like that that you're up here in the formula bar. That gives us all the things that we did manually before in Excel now. So we have a table, we have the graph, we know what our calculation for revenue is. So we're done with this part of Excel for revenue. In the next video, we will go back to our manual calculations and calculate cost. And then we'll come back to Excel and do cost in this file as well. So go ahead and save your work, then you can go on to the next video or take a break.